Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's your boy Ranj. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the bottom part of an Audi S3 AB facelift. This might be very similar to a pre-facelift or even the saloon version, but I'm not too sure. Today I'm going to be only showing you how to remove it on my car, which is an S3 AB facelift. So before we actually go into the video, I'll show you what tools you need to complete uh, the bumper removal process and actually showing you, uh, you know, how to actually remove the bumper. I wanted to just quickly touch on a few questions that have been asked on Instagram around why did you have to remove the bumper to, to get the diffuser on and so on and so on. So last year, and if you do, haven't seen this video, I'll put it in the pop-out banner now. Um, I hit my car reverse into something on the hard shoulder. It was a bit of a silly mistake. It can happen to anyone. I was super annoyed at the time. And basically what happened is the damage was here, so on the left hand side. But when I hit the bumper, it actually pressed in. It pushed into the um, left rear quarter panel too. And uh, the work that I got done in it initially was poor. I did a shit job. Uh, basically this wasn't flat and it wasn't aligned. I eventually found somebody to work on my car. This guy, uh, who I've just recently took it to, he's done a wicked job on my rear quarter panel. So this is all flush now, all exactly how it was before I actually hit it. Amazing. But one of the other jobs that I told him to do was, listen, while you've got the bumper off, can you put the new diffuser on for me? Because in the entirety that I've had this bumper, it's been off like four times, five times now that I took it off like last week. I don't want to keep taking this bumper on and off because it's just going to weaken the bumper and weaken the clips because it is held on by a series of clip screws and whatnot. And I don't keep, just don't want to keep taking it on and off. But I was like, listen, you've got it off. Can you put my diffuser on it? And you can, walk, can you also connect my diff light that's in my diffuser to the rear tail light? Now, for this diffuser, you've got two options. You can either connect it as a fog light or a brake light. I've chosen to have it, to have it wide up and um, connected as a brake light. No coding involved. Uh, so it's connected to the left rear tail light and essentially just acts as a fourth brake light. So I've got obviously my normal brake lights and I've got my one at the top there in the spoiler and I've got one here. So it's just like a static light, no flashing or anything like that. So I absolutely love it. But the issue was and the reason why I've had to take my bumper off and hopefully this should answer a lot of the questions that I've been asked is this, uh, this diffuser, the fitment on the left hand side was perfect. But on the right hand side there was loads of big gaps and it just wasn't flush at all so if you want to bring the camera down the gaps were here so you could see it just looked like it was hanging off and i was really unhappy about that and the guy was like oh no i've tried my best to get it on but it's just not gonna it's not it, there's no budging essentially um i didn't believe that so essentially what i did was like listen let me take the bumper off one that's going to make a good video because a couple of people have asked me ranch is it easy to take the bumper off i can tell you and with my guide hopefully um it, do, it is easy for you to take the bumper off but when I took the bumper off myself uh, last weekend, you know, it was it was hard to get that to look flush the way it is now. So now I'm super happy with the way it is. This diffuser, the way I want the rear end to look now is absolutely perfect. You can even see that I've got the um, S3 uh, bumper trim in there. So with the Maxon diffuser that I had on previously, that was just never long term. It was really messy, but it was a cool little project for me. Um, but that didn't allow the S3 uh, bumper trim to be in, but now this diffuser does. But a little disclaimer, I'm not going to be removing this bumper in this video because I did it last weekend. I did record a little bit and I'll show you exactly what I recorded now. Oh my god. Listen, I've got time to ramble on yeah, because it's about to rain in a minute. I started this process last night on trying to remove my bumper. The reason being because um, I had some work done on the car and I got my carbon diffuser put on but the guy didn't screw in all the bits which you can see here. Now, you cannot access the part that I wanted to access, which I'll show you in a second once I get to screwing them in, without removing the rear bumper. It's easy, now that I know But the reason I didn't record the full process last weekend is just because the weather was horrible, and I was basically uh, in competition. I was racing against the rain. Okay, so here are the tools that you're gonna need. Now, it'll kind of make sense to show you, you know, what screws kind of hold this bumper into place and, you know, why, the, why you're going to need the, these tools, essentially. So this bumper is held into place by a series of clips and a series of screws. Now, there's two main types of screws uh, that hold this bumper together. There's four in each side uh, of the, kind of under the wheel arched, uh, just behind the wheel here. So on each side, both left and rear, which I'll touch on when I show you actually how to remove the bumper. Uh, and those screws are here they're basically torque screws and what you're going to need is i've just got uh, this one's obviously a magnusian uh, ratchet screwdriver which is really useful to kind of get into little hard places but what you'll need is a t20 torque screw so let me just get it out there we go t20 
T25s on that as well. But yeah, all you'll need is a screwdriver and a T20 um, torque screw bit, and that's it. So that's one of the most important tools you're going to need. Secondly, what you're going to need is a ratchet. So this is open. Now, also, what's really useful is to have these little ratchet bits, those little, these little extensions. Um, you'll need a ratchet for the screws. So there's four other screws that hold this bumper into place. One behind each of the tail lights, and the other two are here. So there's four in total. They're literally here. So you have to remove this boot liner, which I'm going to touch on when I get to uh, show you how to remove the bumper. But you'll need a, a ratchet. But the main thing that you're going to need is this. You're going to need a deep drive socket. So I actually had to buy this on the day I was removing the bumper on Saturday. Uh, this is a 10 mm uh, deep drive socket. So in addition to this deep drive socket and the ratchet, you might need a, a couple of extensions. Now, definitely for these two, you're going to need an extension. Um, and for the for the screws behind the rear tail lights, the extension you're going to need is a bit of a flexy one like this, just because unless you've got a really small ratchet. But I'll get into show it. Uh, I'll get into that once I show you, you know, how to remove the screws and so and so. But yeah, in addition to the screwdriver, the T20 torque screw, the ratchet and the 10mm uh, deep drive socket. Okay, so the last two tools you're going to need, not really tools, are these two little appliances. So this, you're going to use to get this part of the um, um, boot bit out. I don't even know what it's called, but essentially it's a little key. And essentially you're going to need something like that to twist it. That's all you need this for. But this here, so this little tool or whatever you want to call it, this is actually meant for the wheel uh, bolt caps to actually get them and twist them off and uh, pull. What I found this really useful for is, you know the really long screws that I'm referring to, so one behind each tail lights and one behind this little uh, hard plastic boot trim here. Those screws are really long and the hole to get to access those screws, you know, is really difficult. You can't really get your finger in there. You can, but it's really difficult. Now, when you're obviously using your 10mm uh, deep drive socket to kind of get the bolt, get the nuts off the um, screws, um, you're going to have to kind of carefully try get the nut without, if you don't base, put it this way, if you try to get your finger and get the nut out, essentially there's a, pot, there's a wrist that's going to fall into the chassis itself so you, and you don't want that. So this basically helps you get the nut and basically pull it off and then just put it somewhere securely. So they're all the tools you're going to need. So in summary, a T20 torque screw bit with a screwdriver. If you've got a uh, ratchet screwdriver, even better. This to basically get the nuts off the really long screws so, you don't, uh, so they don't fall into the chassis. A 10mm deep drive socket and a ratchet and a couple of extensions and the flexi extension behind the tail lights and for the one behind this hard plastic boot trim you're going to need a longer um ratchet extension and that's it so for the link for the 10 mil deep drive socket just because you know everybody's got sockets lying around but they might not have the deep drive ones so i definitely didn't start to go buy one i'll put the link um in the description box as to where i got mine from I'll also be putting the link in the description box as to where I got my diffuser from, just to kind of touch back on that. A lot of people have been asking me, Rand, can you please send me the link to my diffuser? The reason why I haven't provided it yet is because I only like sharing things which I think are going to be useful to other people. Uh, I don't really like, I'm not the type of person to, you know, hold on to information just because uh, I only want it to be on my car. Absolutely not. This diffuser took three months to come from AliExpress um, and it's not an OEM uh, diffuser so it doesn't have all the clips and the tabs that you know my s3 oem diffuser had um so i just want to kind of make people aware of that it isn't perfect but obviously right now it looks amazing because of, you know i've had to put some work into it but um would i recommend it the way it looks now obviously yes but it's a shame because there's so many um good diffusers for the saloons but for the sport that there's hardly any but anyway i'll leave that up to you it's your decision but all i'm saying to you is it's not going to be perfect like the Audi S3 OEM diffuser in terms of fitment you do have to put a bit of work in or whoever's going to be doing fitting it for you um you know there is a bit of work to be putting to get it to be look you know to get it to look OEM flush so yeah let's actually move on to the actual process of removing the bumper so step one what I would do is get the torque screws out of the inside of the bumper okay so step one I'm on the left side of the rear bumper right now so behind this wheel what you're going to find is three four screws so you can see there there's one there the second one's there and the third one is right there and then the fourth one is there just a little bit further into the wheel uh, the rear wheel arch you need to remove those screws from the left and the right hand side of the car that's step one so step two is to remove the rear tail lights now to remove the rear tail lights what you're going to do 
is you're gonna have to try access them or you're gonna have to access them. So you gotta remove this piece of um, boot trim here, put it to the side. And then on this side, remember I said you're gonna need this tool. That is subtle. And I don't know if you're able to get the camera. There's a little key here. So what we're gonna do, you twist it and you basically give it a bit of a pull. There we go, that will fall. So hopefully, I'll show you what I meant by that. You can probably see it a little bit better there. Yeah, cool. Fast. Now that you've removed those two panels in the boot to access um, behind the rear tail light, I don't know if you can see this. That is a screw that basically holds the rear tail lights um, to the car. Essentially, that's the easiest way to put it. So you need to basically undo that screw, and um, that'll basically just come out. The second thing you need to do to remove the rear tail light is essentially, if you just want to hold this camera again. For me, I've got Alicia holding the camera and helping me out. The second thing you need to do, so once you've loosened it, once you've taken that screw out, the tail light's going to be definitely a little bit looser. What you need to do, like I said, there's two little um, kind of like things that hold the tail light in here, literally right here. I know exactly the location. You do just gently keep shimmying it to you. So I would say in this kind of like direction, keep shimmying it to you, and the rear tail light's just going to pop out. The rear tail light will also have a um, a wire connected to it. Just it's a little green, uh, a little green connector. Just carefully undo them both get the rear tail light and store them somewhere. I put mine in my back seat because I knew they won't fall or anything like that. Or if it did rain, they won't get any rain on them. So that's step two, remove the rear tail lights. And it's the exact same thing on this side. So all you need to do is undo that screw, shimmy it towards you, undo the um, undo the wire that's connected to the rear tail light. And again, put it on your rear seat or just put it in your boot or wherever you think it's safe. The next step is, you see right here. So once you remove the tail light, there's going to be like a, it's called a bumper lock. What you need to do, and it's, there's one on each side, literally right here, I remember the exact location. I don't know if I would have recorded it before it started to rain, because the rain was just horrible. What you need to do is pull it up towards you. Now, if your bumper has only been like, if it's never been removed, you need to be, you know, you need to put a little bit of force into it. I don't, you know, try use a little bit of energy. Don't obviously go, you know, pull it off straight like that. Don't yank it off, but just just keep just keep at it, but make sure you're just doing it quite sternly, and eventually that will just pop up. It's kind of like how can I describe it? It's kind of like if anybody watches Superman, Man of Steel, you know when Man of Steel puts that kind of thing into that machine, it's kind of like that. It's literally like a big lock. That is all I can describe it. Of. It's like a a big piece of slate, a big 3D cuboid piece of slate. That's all. I, if I've got a picture and I can find one, I'll put it as an overlay. But that's what you need to do right here. After you move the tail out, you need to pop that lock up. It's literally like a little piece of plastic. Pop it up, it's about that big. Exact same thing on this side. Remember, you need to do this after you move the tail lights, because that's also what holds the bumper into place. Now we're going to remove these really long screws. Uh, like I said, there's one behind each of the rear tail lights, and there's one here, and there's literally one here. I remember the exact location. To access the ones here, all you need to do is pull this up, remove this little boot kind of like, what would you call this like, boot protector to basically access your, um, uh, where your spare wheel is. This is all you're gonna do is literally pull up and all it's held in is by like these little spigot springs, the same springs that hold all of this black trim in, in place. So literally pull it up, literally up upwards direction and it will all unclip um, and it's easy as that. Now, those screws aren't just visible screws, they're hidden behind these little uh, rubber bungs. So I'm going to have to use the camera again to show them. So like I said, one behind each of the rear tail lights. Right now we'll, I'm showing you the right hand side rear tail light. To access it, what you need to do is... There we go. You need to remove this little rubber plastic bung. Now, there we go. You've got the exact same thing on the, uh, on the left hand side uh, behind the rear tail light and you've got the exact same thing here so one here and here so you've got four of these in total and behind um each one of these is you've got one of these really really long uh, screws now as you can see you can see the nut towards the end you need to carefully undo that nut with the 10 mil deep drive socket and like i said um for the one behind the rear tail lights you're going to be wanting to use like a little extension like this just so you can get into it or access it once you remove it, that is when you're going to need to use this little, um, what would you call this? How would you describe it? Like a little claw. A pincer. Like a little pincer. Once you, you're going to get this pincer tool and essentially what you're going to do is once the, 
once the thing's on the end, you're going to quickly, carefully get it. Obviously, you won't have all this in your hand, but you're going to carefully get it and place it there. So you carefully remove the nut behind the right tail light. You do the exact same thing behind the left tail light. After you remove this hard plastic trim, obviously you've got these little bungs here. You need to remove them and then basically do the exact same thing. Remove the nuts off the two long screws. Now remember for the ones behind the plastic trim, you're going to need a long extension to basically access it. Just because, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but they are really, really deep in. And like you hopefully would have seen that circle or that hole to access those screws are really, really small. Now, there's two more screws that you need to uh, remove and you're going to use your screwdriver and your T20 torque screw bit again. Those screws are under the under the car, so essentially you're going to have to get dirty. Now I'm already in kind of like some scrappy clothes because I've just been on a walk in Scotland and I'm going to quickly show you how to remove those screws. They're really, really easy. So, Okay, so there's one. You're going to have to remove that. And the second one is there. So there's one on each side. So essentially there's one on the left and there is one on the right. Yeah. So that is it there, all of the screws removed. Make sure you store them all safely. What I did was basically store them in different parts of my car. It's probably the only way I could have kept organized. Now, the last stage of removing this bumper is the basically unclipping it. Now, to unclip it, if you just want to walk around here. I was going to use the right side as an example. Now, I'm not going to unclip it because like I said, this bumper has been unclipped like four to five times in the entirety that I've had it. If I, put, if I unclip it off again, Fuck it, I might as well just drive around without a bumper. Anyway, what you need to do is carefully, yeah, pull the bumper towards you. It's already going to be relatively loose. Pull from here, this little bit here, keep pulling, and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to hear it. It's going to keep, and don't start rushing. Just do it gently. Keep pulling, pulling, pulling. It's going to start unclipping, clipping, clipping. When you get to here, obviously you've got that, you've still got that screw holding it into place. Gently remove it. Keep working your way around. Unclip, unclip, unclip. Remember, there's a screw there, there's a screw there. They're not tight because you've taken the nuts off, but essentially that's what's still kind of somewhat holding it into place in addition to those clips. Keep on clipping it, keep on clipping it. When you get to about here, work your, get to the left hand side and start doing the exact same thing. So start pulling this part towards you. So start unclipping it, unclipping it, and eventually you'll get to about here and the whole bumper will be unclipped and unhinged. The only thing that will be holding this bumper together is a wire to your rear parking sensors. Unclip that, the whole bumper is disconnected and basically detach from the car itself and then you can do whatever you want with it. So that is how you remove a bumper of an Audi S3 8E facelift sport back. It's pretty easy. Okay, so let's touch base again and just summarize what you need to do to remove, remove the rear bumper. Firstly, remove the torque screws on the inside of the um, rear bumper, essentially behind the wheel arches. Secondly, you need to remove the tail lights. Obviously, I showed you how to remove the tail lights. After removing the tail lights and obviously disconnecting them, you need to remove the bumper locks, essentially, which are located around here, which obviously I've also shown you, and I'm going to try and put the overlay image. After you remove the tail lights and disconnected them, and obviously unscrewed them, because obviously they're held in by those two little bungs there, and obviously that screw, you need to then basically remove these, one in each, one behind each of the tail lights, left and right. Remove the plastic trim after removing this little boot thing here and uh, again they're located the ones behind this little hard plastic trim are like literally located right there where my fingers are um get your ratchet get your 10 mil deep drive socket and obviously the extensions that are applicable you know the, the extensions you use behind the tail lights are different to here just because obviously it's awkward behind the tail lights remove those nuts off those screws and then lastly uh and obviously use a little pincers to get those nuts and get them carefully without them dropping into the chassis and then lastly the two remaining port screws uh, under the car just where the diffuser is and um then obviously just like unclipping the uh the bumper from right to left or left to right obviously work your way around and then the very very last stage you're just disconnecting that wire for the rear parking sensor okay so that's the end of the video hopefully it's been helpful hopefully it's been informative if you think it has please do drop a like drop a comment subscribe to my youtube channel hit that bell icon for future notification hope you love the you know the look of my uh, the rear of my audi s3 so many more mod mods planned i've got the coilovers to fit i've got the new brakes to fit i've got the brake upgrades i've got the um powerful in mirrors that are coming with the carbon mirrors because like I said I'm going to be adding more carbon to the car now I want a carbon look and then eventually new wheels um, and there's so many more mods coming eventually so please do follow the journey this channel is now purely about my Audi S3 and just cars in general so what I'll do for the tools that I've used in this video um, where I can I'll include the link in the description box as to where I got them from because I think they're quite handy such as this Magnussion 
um, a ratchet screwdriver. It's really easy, and because it's got that little flexy bit, it's really easy to get into little hard places like you know inside the wheel arches with for those torque screws. Um, in addition to the 10 mil deep drive socket. And obviously it comes with all these little bits, which is really cool. So you've got your little T20 bit, uh, which is the main thing, especially in these kind of Audis to get like, some of the stuff off and remove it and replace it. But yeah, um, I just think it's really useful to have these in your boot. You never know when you're going to need them. But yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please do follow me on my social media platforms, S3 Rand on Instagram and S3 Rand on TikTok. I only recently got TikTok. Uh, but yeah, listen, I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully this has been a helpful video. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comment box uh, as usual. Take it easy. Peace.